Okay. We are doing something new. And it's new in a couple of ways. First and foremost, this is kind of a Patreon sponsored effort. We are going to be drawing Ancient Rome. And if you know me, you know that I am a huge history person. Love military history. And I have a big, huge soft spot for the ancient Romans. And drawing something like Rome, or honestly, even any ancient city, is going to give a little giblets tingling. It just is. And what better way to do a project like that than to take the mother of them all, Rome itself. Now that said, Rome ancient one has been done before there's a gentleman uh, Aldolfo Lanciani or something like that and I, I, I've got the first name wrong but uh, he mapped ancient Rome, medieval Rome and what to him was modern Rome like 1900 and it was like 48 feet across or something ridiculous, okay? And we'll we'll pull up some facts as we're drawing later today. We're not doing that. I'm not going to draw Rome 48 feet across. I mean, I've done a 12 foot across map, but I'm not doing Rome like that. But this is meant to be my Sistine Chapel. My pièce de la résistance, if you will, of maps. And I'm doing it on my time, with no audience, sharing with you later. So that's what we're going to be doing and we're starting here with nothing. It is a blank slate, blank marble if you will. And I'm going to start from nothing. I'm going to walk you through my thought process. I haven't drawn one line yet. I don't even have a blank canvas. And here's where it starts. So, ancient Rome. Pretty big place. Uh, in fact, what was that gentleman's name? Uh, it, it was Rodolfo. Okay, I was, I was close. Rodolfo Lanciani. He did a map that's actually called the former Urbis Romani, which actually then shares the same name exactly as a tablet that they dug up in ancient Rome, which actually has ancient Rome sort of um, uh, map on it. Uh, they only have pieces and parts of it, unfortunately. So his map and that broken tablet actually have the same name. His map has got something like 48 slides or something like that. It's in pieces. Incredible detail. Um, and super huge. In fact, I have a PDF of it here, which I can show you because we're going to be using it as a source of inspiration, I think. So, if we go to Rome, let me open this up, here we go. Let me zoom in on this little bad boy right here. Let's get my touch going. This is the PDF. Now, this, we could just keep zooming and zooming and zooming and zooming. Now, it, it's something like the black is ancient Rome, and then the blue is is modern by his standards uh, but that's like was 1900 and then the, the other color here the red I believe the red was um, by his time medieval he considered it to be medieval and he just drew all of this this is a PDF of it and I'm gonna guess that the, the strong lines between them this is where he separated one plate from another but I thought that this could be a useful resource now, the thing is, though, I mean, this is really featuring ruins, right? I mean, it will help us get our position of things dialed in. Um, maybe some streets and things like that. Uh, the ship of the river. But I, I, don't, I, I can't draw this. I don't want to draw this because this is a, a basically a map of 1900 Rome, medieval ruins, ancient ruins all laid down. That, and that's not what we're doing. But I am going to use this as a resource. So let's just get rid of that for a moment. And I do have several other things that I've downloaded just to use as reference. 
And, like, this is overly simplistic. We're going to be drawing individual buildings on ours. But the reason why I grabbed this one is it gives us a shape of the ancient walls. If you actually go into the medieval period, the, the wall um, shape changes. Uh, we actually start to see some fortifications getting added that um, aren't from ancient Rome. And particularly out here on this side, you start seeing like star fort like influence in the later years. So we need to be very careful though, obviously we're not drawing that type of thing. What I like about this though is, it's giving us the shape of our city, it's giving us the shape of, and position of our roads, and then those key main areas, the baths, the temple of Trajan, you know, uh, uh, tomb page or whatever uh, so I think that this could be a good baseline I I'm going to be picking up on this for sure um, we then also have a couple of similar ones like here's another one that we're going to use and again you can see it's got the same sort of pattern for the walls and everything of course but what I like about this is it actually pulls out the hills a little bit for us. So I, I, I want to use this as well as a resource. Now this map, now this is a great example of something that isn't going to really work. I grabbed this one because what a wonderful, wonderful piece of art it is. But notice the medieval influence. I think this is Rome as it was around 18... 19th century map this and you'll notice the star fort influence beginning to sort of creep in so very different can't really use this do like the fact that it's obviously got our key sort of uh, building sort of marked on it but we won't be using that one too much and then i've got this one this one i actually quite like this from shutterstock um Again, it gives us all of our wall shape, our sizes, it gives us our river here. This, this I think, could be useful to us. It actually does start to give us a sense of where these hills are specifically located and the general sort of shape of them. I kind of like this one. I kind of like this. I think I'll be drawing some influence from that one. Then this one, um, I grabbed this mainly for the river shape. I don't think I can really use this one too much. This is available on Shutterstock. It's actually a, a multi-layered sort of um, vector diagram. But it's, it's obviously way too modern. I believe that this is literally modern Rome. So it may be a beautiful map and a wonderful piece of art, but we won't be using that. So let's get rid of that. Lastly, this one. This is a great example of a map that just looks beautiful. I, I even love the colors on this one. Wall shape, road positions, general sense of where the hills are at, although they're a little harder to read on this map. Wonderful depiction for the main key buildings. Now one of the things that I, when I'm 99% of the time I'm drawing maps for clients, right? And questions I start with Aside from what is the final print size and everything else, and we're going to be asking the same questions of ourselves, but it's always, what are the key geographical features and what are the main buildings? And something like this helps us a lot. Key geographical features, hills, river. So that, and then we're going to almost certainly start with those, right? Then the next is, general shape well we've got the shape it's right here in front of us so we're going to be drawing the shape of Rome then I always ask what are the key buildings and where are they located now some clients don't have any but typically typically there's at least one. Oh, there's a palace oh there are some elven gardens there's a big temple on a hill you know there's at least one thing and often there's more than one so if we're going to draw it to Rome, we're going to ask those questions of ourselves and a map like this helps us understand where those key buildings are going to be located. So we will, we will draw some resource from this. All right. So let, let's shut these down. We don't need these right now. We're definitely coming back to them now. 
first question and it's a doozy it's a real doozy map size normally i draw my maps let's say eight and a half by eleven why eight and a half by eleven so the standard print size for our customers they might deviate a little bit from that plus or minus because they have you know a crop that they need to account for or a slightly different print within the page you know by the time you add your margins and your padding and your frame you might be somewhat smaller then i typically double it so let's say for the sake of argument that we're dealing with a 7 by 10 i'll double it to 14 by, to tw uh, by 20 and that'll be my drawing size that way you can blow it up a little bit to a decent poster shrink it down for a page and you don't lose any fidelity and it's not too shrunk down and you get all of those details creeping in it's lovely so about double the size and let's say 300 dpi unless a client is asking for more i don't typically go higher than 450 dpi because if i'm doubling the size of the map and then doing 600 dpi it starts to get a little bit crazy in size that said boom boom now keep it in mind that Adolfo uh, himself ended up with, I think the scale was one to a thousand or something like that. And his map was like 20, 30, 40 feet across. And we're not doing that. What size do we want to go with? Well, you know, Rome itself is almost square. So I think we could go with something like that. But maybe we keep an aspect ratio that's a little bit wider. So we stick with like an aspect ratio of 8.5 by 11. Um, but we blow it up. And maybe we blow it up big. So 8.5 by 11 doubled would be good. But what about 8.5 by 11 quadrupled? What if we draw Rome big? And then this will really allow us to... Uh, get some great details in there too, right? Which is what we do um, with our city maps. So let's let's do that. So um, eleven, obviously, by four, forty-four, eight and a half, quadrupled. What are we dealing with? Seventeen, thirty-four. I think I've got that right. So width forty-four inches across, height thirty-four. I think 300 DPI is going to be good. I'm tempted to go up to 450. You know what? We got a brand new machine here, brand new computer. Let's have some fun with it, shall we? Let Let's see if we can get away with a map this big. Let's try it. So we create that, and here we are. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna save this right now. Let's, let's save this puppy. Um, there we go. There we go. Julie saved. Now, the next thing that I would do, I've got my canvas here. I've got a blank marble. I'm going to just say blank marble. We've got a blank marble. What happens next? Well, typically, I try to get at least a sketch of our geographic features in. So I think that's where we're going to start. First, I'm going to have a little eggnog because it is indeed the holiday season. That's the stuff. Okay, so let's um, let's get one of our sketches dropped in here. Obviously, it's very much smaller than what we're drawing. So let's just blow this thing up. All right. Now, two things I'm going to do here. One, I want to um, sort of figure out how big I want to draw Rome compared to the actual canvas size here. And where Rome doesn't fall obviously there's going to be buildings beyond the walls uh, there's going to be potentially farms beyond the walls there's going to be um uh, you know o o olive um farms and the likes so because of that 
I always like to leave a little bit of room around my cities to show those other details. They kind of help frame the city itself. The, so the, the canvas doesn't become just this wall of buildings. We end up being able to actually um, show some of the uh, some of the farms, some of the orchards, you know, that type of thing. And they become this softness, this greenery outside of all of the marble of the city itself. So I think we might draw it a little small. I'm going to actually shrink this down a little bit. And we might go with something like this. Let's see. Then this, this is a, obviously we'll have to extend this aqueduct out over here. We'll have to extend the Tiber itself out, but that's okay. We could do that. And this is fairly centered. This is good. My center would be 22, so yeah, we've got what, one, two, three-ish, one, two, yeah, I'm feeling that, I don't want to push it too far to the right, you know, because the city's kind of heavy on the right side over here, so uh, if I start pushing it too much this way to try and perfectly equalize left and right, we're going to find that it feels like there's an imbalance to it, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with this. Plus, it, I think that's because this tip of the wall comes out further than, let's say, this one here. So, I feel that looks good. I feel like that looks good. Okay, so... Let's... Let's draw in our walls. Let's draw in our walls and the river. And let's go from there. Let's see how that looks. So the way I do this is once I've got my sketch layer in behind, and typically I don't use a sketch layer, but I would at least pencil in the shape of the city and everything that I want to sort of have as my sort of bounding features, those, those hills, those rivers, the coastline. But here, obviously, we don't need to do that. I'm going to make that a little bit fainter so we can actually see above it. And then I always add a, a layer called ink. And we're going to dial in our brush size. Obviously, that's not a good brush. So, hard round pen pressure size. Let's see what let's see what a fifteen looks like at this scale. It might be way too small. It's not too shabby. You know, if we're, if we're going to draw kind of like at this, it might be a little bit light. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to do my wall separately. Let's just get the river in first, shall we? doesn't matter if we slightly deviate from like our sketch underneath. I'm sure over 2,000 years the Tiber has changed quite a bit. But let's get it, let's get it approximately sort of dialed in like so. And I consider this to be kind of our sketch then we can actually come in and edit as needed. I'm actually surprised at how much the Tiber narrows at that point. I don't think I ever knew that, and I don't think I would have expected it to. Look at this. I don't think I've ever drawn a river that does that. That's, that's kind of fascinating. I'm actually surprised that they don't have like a bridge there or something, you know, being a narrow point. I wonder if there's, I mean, all the battlements that come over there. That's one of the things that we're going to have fun with, by the way, on um, this particular series, is we're going to be taking a deep look at some of the uh, buildings. 
and architecture of ancient Rome. I've got a couple of great resources to share with you. Oh, that was a bit of a spaz at the end there, so let's just get rid of that. There we go. Now, for finishing off this river, by the way, and its shape, I'm probably going to go to something like Google Maps, zoom in on this area, take a photo or a screenshot of it, and um, just ensure that we've got the rest of the Tiber sort of direction correct and then we'll just sort of trace over there. All right. All right, we have a river. Now for the hills, I'm gonna hit save before something happens. For the walls, I'm gonna do the walls a little bit differently now. And this will be a good example of how I do battlements. Now, here's the deal. I'm gonna show you and you're probably going to say there has to be an easier way, and it almost certainly is. And we might take a look at some bushes that I've got here to see if it's going to be easier. But I'm going to show you what I normally do. Then we're going to look to see if there's an easier way to do it. Photoshop doesn't, in, out of the box, have a dotted line. Illustrator does. Everyone tells me I should draw an Illustrator. They're probably right. Um, but I like Photoshop. It's my, it's my tool of choice, right? So let me show you how we're going to do this. And then, uh, and we'll get a good result. We'll get a great result. But our walls are pretty big, so we're going to see if there's a, then a better way. So, we're going to do a wall. Then I'm going to copy the wall, and I'm going to show you that right now. So, let me go to hard round, no pen pressure. And we're going to do something like this. I actually want to make that wall a little bit thicker, okay? So we're going to up our wall to, let's say 20. Let's see what that looks like. And I, I knew I'm going to cut across a road. We'll delete this afterwards. So if we go something like this. You know what, let, let's just jump right across there. Let's, let's see what comes out there. So that section of the wall. Then what I do is we're going to duplicate this. So now we've got two walls. If I turn that layer off, the other layer's underneath it. I'm gonna make this layer be gray. So I'm actually just gonna do a color overlay. And we'll give it, like, just look up towards a gray here. Something like this. A9, A9, A9. We'll do like that. Will that go okay? Now, why did I do that? I'm going to turn that off for a moment so you can see we've got a wall underneath. Because if I now... And let's change our eraser type here. Let's go to eraser. Um, I, I had this um, sponge eraser that I was working with on a previous map. I don't want that. We're going to go hard round eraser. And we're going to definitely make that a lot smaller. I think we're going to make that... Let's try 20. Uh, that's the width of our brush. It's pretty narrow. Let's try 30. Okay. So this is how I typically do my walls. And then I'll merge these two layers together. What I've done is I've created a darker layer underneath, which has exactly the same shape as the lighter layer above it, and it gives that sense of battlements. And so when we're coming down, it's black. As we come up, it's like gray and then black to, uh, back to black again. Now, I could just go to dark gray, light gray, and that would work too, but I my style is ink. It's pretty heavy on the black, so we're going to stick with that. That does not look too bad. And I love that fine little dottedness. That's a word. <laughs> that you can see there. 
The catch is, that's pretty slow. I've got to do the whole wall like this. And I don't mind. That's what I do. I do very slow, methodical, lots of repetition. Um, and the net result is just wonderful. But is there a quicker way? Is there a quicker way? And so I've got this brush set from a guy called Ahmad, and he's got these incredible brushes. And what I want to do quickly is I wanted to see if we've got a um, dotted line type of thing. Because he's got chains and all sorts in here. By the way, this is a great brush set. Ahmad is his name. And he just he gives it away. It's like, here's my brush set. Let's see, but let's see what it does. I mean, it's it's definitely really freaking cool. I suppose uh, that's almost like a uh, tank track. I mean, I really like it. But I don't think it's the brush that we need right now. It's a great, great, great brush, but not the one for us. So let, let's go back to our eraser and let's get our eraser back up here on the hard round 30 if I remember correctly and then let's let's just do this now normally what I would do is I would draw my entire outer wall then clone it then clone, uh, change one of those clones to be light grey And I'll do it kind of all in one go. That looks nice, actually. That looks perfect. That's exactly what we're after. That's exactly what we're after. But now we've got all of the other walls to do. Because I've already started the process, I don't want to obviously duplicate again and duplicate something that's already been duplicated. So for now, temp and I wouldn't normally do this, we're going to create a second wall layer and then duplicate that just for the rest of this stuff. And that would be good, that would be some good work right there. So now we're going to drop, was it 30? Did I do 30 for the walls? No, I did 20 for the walls, right? 20 for the walls, 30 for the battlements. Talking of which, by the way, there is another way that I could do this. Let me just check here. It's good. Um, sometimes I draw one layer deeper than the other. So, and I'll give you an example. So let's say I did one layer like that. And then the gray layer actually is thinner like this. In fact, it would do it another the other way around. I'll do this for the grey. And I would do a black layer like this. Oh, where is that on top? Let's move it on top. A lot thinner. And then, if you do this, you actually end up with the walkway behind the... Uh, I guess it's the battle that's behind the castellations, right? And I love that. It's such a simple way to get the depth of the wall and then the castellations are actually thinner. But at a map this big, where the line is so thin, I don't think that's necessary. If I was drawing a city a little bit more zoomed in, the city is smaller, I would do it that way. And it's such an easy way to do it too. So let's just get rid of you two cool cats and let's just do another one and then we'll duplicate you later on. Let's get rid of you. Did I get rid of you too? I thought I got rid of you too. Come on, out of here. Go, get. Right. So black, 20. Let's go over the walls. But what I always start with the shape of the wall. Get that in and then we can start adding the details. Now for this, for this, yeah, you know what, let, let, let's do it. But I'm gonna actually make it a solid 
square, like so. There we go. Well, that didn't take too long. We have our walls of Rome, at least sketched in. I'm going to do the interior walls too. We're just going to get all of the walls done in one go. Then I think what I'm going to do next is we're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out where our hills are. The hills of Rome. And I kind of want to sketch them in because the way I draw my hills has an effect on what I draw on it and around it and so on. So I want to get a good firm feel of the, you know, the Palpatine Hill and that type of thing. So we're going to dial them in. Let's do it. Let's just jump straight into this sucker. This one, I'm actually going to go straight across the road. Only because it's so small. I don't want to break it yet. I'm very curious about what these are. So one thing we're going to do as we draw Rome here is we are going to zoom in on certain parts of Rome. We're going to draw in, zoom in on drawings of it. We're going to zoom in on ruins. And we're going to draw individual parts, historically correct, or historically correct as we can get them. And so things like that, we, we're going to zoom in onto the capital there and see what it's about. And if we feel like this wall shape needs to change, we'll change it. I think that's it. Those are our walls. Perfect. All right, perfect. So now, we're gonna duplicate this. And the layer on top, this one, now it was like AD, AD, AD or something, right? Um, a9, 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 A9. Perfect. So we're gonna, well, actually, we could just simply, duh, copy layer style. Where's my copy layer style? There it is. Copy layer style. Paste the layer style. We don't even need to think about applying the color. We're good to go. And then that one, start the process. So hills, hills, and I think roads. And um, now, my style, and I'll show you this in a moment. My style doesn't really draw roads. There are two ways of getting a road onto a map. And um, one is through the implied space between buildings. That's what I use. The other is to actually draw the road itself. Now the problem is if you draw like a lot of roads close to each other, maybe with all of the alleyways and things like that, that's a lot of black. That's a lot of ink on the page, you know? And the eye will see the roads more than the buildings. I like my buildings to be the visual quality of what you're seeing when you zoom out. Imagine Rome. Imagine drawing all of the alleyways and everything on this. It's just going to be so heavy on the black. So I don't like to do that. I, I I think you could do that on a more modern map. Where the roads are such a visual feature, so to speak. But we're going to be using buildings to create our roads for the most part. In between buildings, there's a road or an alleyway, right? But I do like to mark, at least in a sketch form, where my roads are going to be, because then that helps me draw the buildings on either side. Then I can delete my sketch.
another advantage of drawing the walls on their own layer by the way is that once we're done here we could literally apply drop shadow to these in Photoshop and immediately have our walls elevated off the map a little bit. If we make them just part of the regular ink layer, that's a little bit harder to do because then all of our ink has a drop shadow. So I'll actually have a coloring layer for tall buildings. I'll have a coloring layer for low buildings and we'll apply a drop shadow to them that has more height for the uh, taller layer. And we'll show you that probably in a couple of years time once we're done with all of the inking on this map. This is going to be a private commission map. This is, you know, just us having fun. So all commissions kind of obviously come in front. But once a month, we will find two hours to work on this map. That's kind of our promise for our Twitch subscribers on our Patreon backers. Let's zoom out. Let's take a let's take a butchers. Rome starts to take shape. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do next is we're going to get a sketch layer and we're going to we're going to sketch in those roads. And then on the same layer, we're going to mark our hills. All right, not too far to go. We're definitely very much past the halfway point here. Let's kind of do that. This is a Praetorian camp. Okay, okay. You know, I, I've read so many books about ancient Rome. And of course, you read about the Praetorian camp all of the freaking time, right? I don't think I, I... I never knew where it was kind of at. I didn't even know that it was attached to the city like this. I just assumed it was kind of a little bit outside of the city. Apparently not. It's right there. Okay. We are going to learn quite a bit about ancient Rome on this journey, I suspect. Okay. get the corners kind of feeling right because corners with like this particular style can be a little bit of a bugger nice Praetorian camp done now you see they definitely had towers there right they definitely had towers so while the original map we're working off is not showing that level of detail, we are absolutely freaking literally going to do it. Just, to, I'm going to actually talk about the uh, towers on these and the gatehouses and everything right after I've done this stretch here. Because I'm thinking about the scale of this map and this is, this is one of the challenges that we have a little bit. Is that the city is so freaking large. Drawing it at this scale. Things like a shed or a tower might not actually show up more than just being a pretty little dot on the map. So, you know, th if this is, let's actually, um, get a little sort of sketch layer going on here so if this is half a kilometer that's obviously 500 meters right that's roughly 1500 yards at 
Uh, it was, no, no, 1,500 feet. 1,500 feet. I was like, something isn't computing yet. 1,500 feet. Now that means that is 750 feet, right? It means that this here is about 300 and math. 375, right? 375 feet. So what this is saying is, okay, approximately speaking, you know, 185-ish, 187. Okay, about 90-odd. 90-ish. 45 feet. That's 45 feet. In other words, that's 45 feet. So if we drew a tower 45 feet across, it is that. It's teeny tiny. So I'm actually gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this scale. Uh, and we'll keep that handy as a reference, you know? But it does mean that that little tiny thing right there is basically transposed to maybe, maybe that. Assuming a tower 45 feet across. I think that's okay. And I think what we could also then do is like do some like a little larger. Maybe like this and the tower is actually larger than 45 feet across. Maybe it's a pretty large tower. Something like this is probably about 50 feet across. I don't think that's crazy speak. I think you could easily have a tower about that. So that's kind of the scale we're going to be hitting up when we hit those sections. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep that scale handy. But let's uh, let's drop the opacity on it a little bit so it's not too distracting. Okay. Hit save because we just did quite a bit of work there. Let's um let's get a sketch layer in. I think what I'm going to also do is I'm going to get these layers tidied up here. So we've got our, this is our top layer. Top. Right, so that's black. Let's get you up there. What am I missing here? What? What's going on? Oh, you know what? I'm going to get rid of you. This will be easier this way. Okay, there we go. That's what was throwing me off. I couldn't see the grey. Um, okay. So let, let's, let's clean this up. That is wall black. That is wall black. These two can be merged, in other words. There we go. And then this... And this, these can also be merged. I'm kind of really tempted to merge our walls right now. I'm really, really, really tempted. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. Let, let's do it. There we are. Good deal. I'm going all in. I just hit save. I'm, I'm ready. Roads. So we're going to go here, we're going to go here, we're going to do a sketch. This is something that we can get rid of later. Um, how do I want to do this? I think... I normally sketch in grey, it's almost like sketching with a pencil, right? Let's make a bush a little smaller. In fact, you know what I want to do? Just... Let's do it on the sketch. No, let's do it on the sketch. So, 
we're drawing in 15 pixels 20 pixels for the wall I think it was 30 pixels for the gap let's just call it gap that's gonna confuse me later but there we go so if we're doing that I think I'm gonna sketch 15 and I'm gonna keep it like that Let, let's do 15 and I'm gonna change to the gray okay let's do this so so here's the thing using our scale these these roads are like 50 60 feet across major through fair 60 feet across do you feel that that is about right I'm gonna make this just a little bit darker while we're doing this, just a touch. sketch layer this starts to give us a sense of districts right it gives us a sense of where our buildings are going to start to fall where we're actually going to be drawing them and on that note let's talk about buildings for a moment let's talk about how we do buildings because if we do if, if all of our roads are drawn like this and by the way none of our roads will be drawn like this then it start, I, I feel it starts to uh, take on a very modern ambience. You know, it, it's almost like a, a Google map or something like that. So, if, in fact, we could actually sort of take a look at this in many ways. You know, th there's no buildings in between. What you're seeing are roads, key locations. That's it. And that, that works. I mean, th th there's nothing wrong with that. The alternative, though, is if, let's say, you sketch, you know, I, I want my road to be here, and maybe there's a an offshoot, but it's still fairly major, right there, and then I actually draw in buildings next to this, let's say. Now, these buildings are too large for this map, but don't worry about that. But if we start to draw in buildings, like this, and then I go to the other side, all right. Now, what have I done here? Well, I've actually drawn the buildings to be the edges of my roads and likewise if I get rid of the sketch here, if I can actually do this, if I get rid of the sketch here you can still see the road but the buildings are now doing it, it's a negative space that's what the road now becomes or is defined by and I feel like this is much easier on the eye than this approach particularly like where you've got um actually we need to get rid of you come on like so 
like buildings and the road I feel just starts to become too much the road itself the road like it, it almost becomes too dominant and again I think that works well in a more modern setting so if I was drawing New York I'd probably actually draw in the roads pretty hard because of the sidewalks the roads they're, they're a very strong visual feature but otherwise I do this approach right here and this approach allows us to imply alleyways and the such you know we've got all of these little alleyways coming in here maybe little sort of right here little hogs and trannies and things so this is this is what we're gonna do on this main map here So our roads will become those guides that we're going to be drawing buildings up against. Oh, we're drawing in black. Let's get rid of that. Curious about these terminating points. Like, like what is, what is going on there? I guess, I guess there's a building there. And okay, where's the Appian Way, by the way? I'm very curious. Maybe, maybe it's not marked as the Appian Way at this scale. I wonder which one is the Appian Way. I'm really curious about that now. So Hadrian's tomb is on the other side of the river. Accessible only from this side, I guess. Must be like a, this must be a very ceremonial bridge going across towards Hadrian's tomb right there. Okay, how much more we gotta do here? Is that all of them? Is that all of the main routes? Okay, okay, cool. One thing I did miss on the ink layer, black, hard power, uh, hard round pen, pressure size, 15, that's good. So, it, it, is this, does this map actually show us, oh, the Via Appia, is this the Appian Way? Yeah, this is the Appian Way right here, Via Appia, Porta Appia, there it is, right there, the doi. I looked at this before and didn't even twig. There's the Appian Way. Epic, absolutely epic. So, are these outlines our hills? Is that what I'm seeing? Not, I'm not quite sure why this one just terminates there, but okay. I kind of like this shape. Okay, I like I like this. Yeah, they gotta be. And they're not super legible with this particular map. But I think it's definitely a start. Okay, let's bring in another 
guide on this one. But let's let's take a look at what guides we've got here. So this one is great just for building placements and names. I don't think it's useful for anything else. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one off for now. We don't need that. This is the one I think we're working off right now. This one. I love this map, by the way. This style here. This is where I got my style for how I draw my hills. This is just lovely. I, I, I adore this. I think this has some sub roads on it too that we don't have. This would be a good one for us to pull in. Let, let's do it. Let's grab this one as a part of our overlay. So we're going to be here. We're going to grab this across. Okay, we could use our ink, hopefully, as a guide. But hopefully, we're not too far off from each other. position of mine. Maybe maybe we just pull it this way as a smidge. Yeah, that, that's actually pretty close. Yeah, that map's a little bit larger than ours. But um, I think I think that's not too bad. The reason why I brought that one in is I want to use it to help with hill placement. It's definitely got a slightly different shape to some of the things going on. That's okay. That's okay. We match this one and that will do for me okay and that is a map from like 1800 odd so it could easily have some inaccuracies to it that this one does not so i think this one is a better one for our shape does this show anything for hills kind of sort of not really i'm gonna ignore that Right, so this this is gonna be the main one and we'll just we'll sketch in our hills and then we'll use the other map that we just copied in to sort of get a a better sense so yeah there there here yeah that that's what it's doing okay okay there uh, I don't know what this one is doing I don't know where that's going like this, I don't, I don't know, it, it, I, what, it just ends, like the hill just ends, but you know, I guess that's the thing, like this I feel is here, so this one just confuses the crap out of me, you know, I could do a google search for hills of Rome, I think that's what we're going to do. Oh, yeah, you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will help. This will help. Okay, so... Perfect. Look at this one. Uh, oh, that, not on that. Let, let's, t let's bring it over here. Let's 
recites this bad boy. So this that's kind of line up here. Okay, so this will actually, I think, help us. Oh, it'll certainly help me. Because if I'm doing this, and we're actually... So there's our Aventine Hill. Yeah, okay, okay. As confirmation, like, of where our main hills are at. Let's get rid of that. Interesting. This, the, the, that's, this is an interesting kill shape right here. Okay, so it's lining up with this here, I guess. So, here, here, right underneath the, the wall, right there, right along. So, what it, it, does it then continue up here? It's not marked on that one, but it, it looks like it then does this, right? Is that what I'm seeing? Kind of like that. Interesting. Interesting. So that's definitely one. This is, looks like a nice one. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is good. Oh, this is nice. All right. Let's copy this across. Ooh, it's a tiny little map, though. Can I get a higher resolution of that? Let, let, let's let's see if this one's any bigger. No, it's not. Okay, so let's get rid of you. And this will be blurry because we are drawing very very big. But approximately speaking, it's something like this, I guess. That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby. Okay, see, look at that. Look at that. That, that is very distinct on the edge of that. I like that quite a bit. I do feel like we've got it maybe a little on the large side. River shape off. It's like everyone has got a different river shape. Maybe they're just approximating it. I feel pretty good with the one that we drew, you know? Um, interesting, interesting shape there. You know what I love about this? The key on the side for the period about when things were built. That's kind of cock on that is. I like that. Yeah, this dude's definitely, definitely, definitely got a different shape than we do. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and squidge in. At least see look at that. Yeah. Very, very, very different shape. Very different position of the hills and everything. Oh not the hills, the walls. Just a smidge of a different bloody position. You see that? It's almost like his map is slightly rotated. Hold on a sec, is it? I mean, a little bit, right? A little bit. Keep it something like that. And so if we...
keep this one showing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the hills on like our sketch layout. We'll just do it on a hill layer, I think, for now. And then I'm going to like show these layers. Not that one. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely, they're definitely very, very, very close. Thing is with this, you see the uh, the baths of Diocletian here, yeah, and the, like this, I guess a uh, uh, Vimial, Vim Inal, right here. It's kind of like this almost um, peninsula of rock that comes out. Not on this one. Oh, I guess no. So the darker area is the lower area. <coughs> darker area is the lower area. Ah. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I can dig that. I can dig that. So let's see if we can get a sketch in of our hills. That would be a good way to end this. What did I do with my pen? Who stole my pen? There it is. Panic over. So... Let's go to kind of near the ink, but still kind of sketchy. I don't want to ink this in yet. Hill. What color do I want to do this? You know, I think for giggles, just for now, let's like slide towards kind of a brown. Just for now, just while we're drawing these in. Okay, so knowing that the um, Viminal here, are we on brush? We're on brush 15. I'm going to go slightly heavier on the, the hill sketch. Okay, so this is coming down like that, right? So this is like all lower down there. Okay, so it's something like this. And it looks like it comes up here, and it looks there's another arc here. That this road comes between these two hills. Nice. So that means that comes down like that. Okay. Then that follows this road. Literally follows the top of the hill. Cool. Like so. I'm putting these little uh, dashes in so I know where the low side is at. All right. So what did this one say in that regard? Close enough. Okay, general shape is right. General shape is right. But, but, he's coming up over here. He's coming up in this direction. Well, I guess this one does too. So, it kind of follows the, the, the road, literally follows the top of the hill. And then, I'm going to actually just do this. So, I can see that the road is doing that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It does this. Cool. cool, 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 and then it comes through, like so, like so. What happens to it then? He, it like just, it just comes out of the gate, right? It just, it comes out over here. See, this, this map here, it does this, and then comes out under the wall, and then comes out over there. And I, yeah, I've got to be honest with you, I kind of like that, because it would make sense for this at the top of the hill. So I'm actually going to get rid of this bit right here. And I'm going to assume that it does like this. Or something like... So this here, it's not even marked on this one. This does do this though. I'm gonna actually draw this in. Okay. So 
is this? I think it's doing this. And we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that bit. That's okay, because we're just sketching the hills in right now. See, this doesn't mark it either, but th this is showing kind of like this type of deal. Which I think is, is okay if this might be a pretty minor slope up, you know? And then we've got this, the Aventine. Is it Aventine? Okay, and this is all like the downside right there, so then it loops around. And then kind of does this. So according to this map, it kind of actually does this, which I'm okay doing. Do I need any more hills on this? Here. Okay. I think those are all hills up there. Has that captured everything? Yeah, so th this is the capital hill. There's a, there was a capital hill that, yeah, this map is showing it, but it's barely visible, right? So I think, I think, for now, we'll just do this, and I'm just gonna hatch it across, so we don't forget that there was a hill there. I think that's our basics. I think that is our basic. So, going back to the beginning, Questions. What are the main geographic features? We have a river. We have hills. We have drawn them. What are the main... What is the main shape of our city? And are there any key locations that need to be captured in it? I think we've got our shape defined. Are there any major thoroughfares, major roads? We've got those captured. So the thing that we will now do next is we need to extend all of our roads and hills and the Tiber out to our map edges. And for that, I'm probably going to hit up Google, um, Google Maps, go to grab a section, overlay it right here, and make sure, because we could guess that this kind of does this, and we're not probably going to be too far wrong. But let's get it right, especially because, for all I know, the type of does this, you know, next. That probably doesn't, but let's get it right. So, that's where we're going to do, or what we're going to do next. With those done, I think we're going to be ready for actually drawing in some buildings. Now, to give a, give a sense of scale, by the way, in these buildings, we will literally be doing this type of thing. All over the map. It's going to be a project of love. The whole thing's going to be fully coloured, by the way, too. And this is where we're at. That is a great way to end Rome Chapter 1. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I don't know if this video will be coming out in an edited format, shortened. Um, but on my Patreons, you will definitely be getting the unedited version. And I want to thank you for being a Patreon banker. I want to thank you Twitch subscribers on the bottom of my heart. I wouldn't be doing this video except for you. So thank you for being such awesome supporters. I love you all very much. I'm going to see you before Chapter 2 in the next stream. Until then, everyone have a good one.